Welcome to Intune Training with Jake and Sean and me. Hey. So let's talk more about some graph stuff. Awesome. Let's. I guess we can dive right in. Let me uh, mm -hmm. get my screen shared out here. There we go. Can everyone see everything okay? I can see everything. I, I can see everything just fine. Fantastic. So it looks familiar, actually. Right yeah. from our first episode, I believe. Um, you know, we really kind of tried to break down what all goes into an actual graph call. And okay. after, you know, the last couple episodes, obviously, we walked through Graph Explorer. But we kept on saying, like, hey, this is just going to be the first step. We eventually want to get into doing things with PowerShell and doing straight API calls. So with that, Sean put together a wonderful script for us. Oh, that is pretty. Help us do that. Um, we will make this script available. Uh, there will be a GitHub link down below for it. Um, but I mean, let's kind of like walk through, you know, what's exactly happening here. Um, Sean, mm -hmm. Johannes, you know, any idea about this first block here? You know, b before we get started, it, you were so good at drawing lines all over the screen in our first episode. I really hope you're going to draw more lines for us today. I got you on that. Perfect. Perfect. So, yeah, I think if we if we basically look at what we were talking about before, um, we should be able to just map these different items over between between our chart, essentially, and, and what we've got going on in the PowerShell script. So uh, I think we probably ought to start from the chart side. Hey, look, lines that are going the wrong direction. <laughs> I think it's the perfect direction. That works. So, yeah, up, up here at the top, obviously, one of the things we said that you've got to include in a request is header information. Um, when we were doing it inside of Graph Explorer, it's handling that itself because you already signed in. So it's got, it's got the token already. So what we're hand, doing here at the top of the script is we're basically going out, we're using the uh, MSAIL or Microsoft Authentication Library module to get that token from Azure Active Directory. And then we're passing it into a uh, header uh, body basically that will then pass into the request itself. And above that, you know, we do spit out what the actual access token is if you were curious to see what that looked yeah. like. Um, and just like Sean mentioned down here in the header, we do pass in that value again. Below that though, we get into the actual like methods that we were talking about earlier. So over here, we've got the get, delete, put patch and post. In this quick example, we've just simply got get set up. Um, and then we've got that graph URL endpoint down there as well. So, so what you're saying is there's a method to your madness here. This time around, yes, Sean, yeah. there is. <laughs> um, and then after that, it's a simple, we're just gonna throw an invoke web request. It's gonna grab in that method that we had grabbed, in this case, get, reference that URI that we're referencing. So the users, URI that we have here, and then so passing that header information. We're actually using invoke rest method here. Um, not a huge difference, but there is a slight difference between the two um, in, in how it's essentially making the call. And I, I believe that this one gives you a little bit more uh, flexibility, invoke rest method. But mm -hmm. the only reason that? I call that out is because there's also invoke web request, so. Oh yes, of course, yeah. I clearly yeah. my brain is elsewhere. Uh, that, that's all of us today. <laughs> but yeah, so it's it's really that easy as far as like just to get information to start. Um, you'll notice down here below, we have another, you know, method URI and then a body section. And that really comes into play when we're talking about the right hand side here with the put patch and post, where you need to actually have that body or payload included as well. And then eventually we run the same invoke rest method, same information, except we're also passing in the body as well. Uh, now, I do see this other little thing that's commented out here, that status code variables. What exactly uh, does that do? Yeah, so that one in PowerShell, it might actually be in PowerShell 6, but at definitely 7 and later, we get an additional switch called status code variable, where we can actually pass in basically a, another value that will return the status code of the request to a specific variable. Um, so kind of one of the weak spots, spots of invoke rest method in the older PowerShell versions is it wasn't always very easy to pull out that status code. So on seven and later, um, it, depending on the version of PowerShell you're using, um, 
pass in that status code variable option to go ahead and um, see what that actual status code of the request was in the end. Awesome. And it's really that simple at the end of the day. And you're probably wondering, well, how exactly do we go ahead and create like this, you know, super secret client ID and things like that. But we're going to cover that in the next episode. Don't worry, you won't have to wait until two weeks. We will include that with this video as well as a follow up. Anything else you guys got to add? No, not, not at all. Other than uh, I've always wanted to do this. So click below in the video uh, to get the link to the next video that Jake was just talking about. Okay, awesome. now I feel like a real YouTuber. <laughs> and with that, thank you again. Have a great rest of your day. Thanks, Bye. everyone.